In this video, we'll look at camera animation techniques for framing and animating the camera around static characters. That way the characters can be animated to the camera once it's locked. What we'll do in this scene is make this camera move. Starting out in the lobby, staring out the windows, and moving to the left and looking at the echoes off in the distance. The next shot then would be a medium shot of one of them talking to us. What I've done here is put the camera in place, animate it, and make sure that the framing is right following the rule of thirds. I'll start out with a clean scene. I'll load up the camera animation start from the animation folder. Here's my starting scene. I've placed the two characters in as statues to give me a focal point for the camera. I'll animate them later. In 3ds Max, to make a camera, go to Create and Cameras on the command panel. There's two kinds of cameras available, a target and a free camera. They're essentially the same, except that the target camera has a target as an object. Here's an example. The difference then, the way you can think of it in a practical manner, is the target camera is a dollied or craned camera. The free camera is a handheld. The target camera then can give you smoother motion in some cases. Really, I find both work equally well. It's a personal preference which one you're more comfortable with and which one you'd like to use. I'm going to use a target camera. And, as you can see, the lens defaulted to a 28mm lens, which is what I had set before. In the lenses, the lower the millimeter, or focal length, the wider the field of view. I'd like 28 for interiors, as it doesn't cut down on the distance in the room as much. I'll go into a top view and press G for grid and F3 for wireframe. That way it's easy to see. What I've also got going for cameras is under the selection filter I've checked cameras. That way I can't accidentally grab and move an object. To start out with the animation then I'll move the camera into the position in the top view. I'm going to stand looking out the windows and with the target aiming out to the deck and the boulders, presumably to a desert view beyond. I'll press C to go into the camera, and F3 for shaded. Right now I'm going to switch away from realistic and work in a shaded view so I'm not seeing so much black. I'll pan the camera up using the mouse wheel, holding shift if I need to constrain the direction. I'm going to start out this shot looking out a window. I've panned my camera over to look out the biggest window, and I'll dolly the camera in so that I can see just the deck and the boulders. I also need one more thing for animating a camera. I'll go to the render setup, and on the output size drop-down in the common tab, I'll choose HDTV. That's our aspect ratio for this competition. I'll click on the 1280 by 720 button. Really what I care about is this, the image aspect of 1.77, or 16 by 9. Now I'll press Shift F, and in the view, the yellow line shows what's within the rendering. This is pretty good. I might want to pan over a little bit to get that starting frame set, and use the Orbit tool to rotate the camera, making sure I don't pass through any framing members on the window. Okay. Here's my initial setup. I'm looking out over the garden, over the deck, and I've got a major rock here on the one-third line vertically, and also these rocks are on the third line horizontally. This draws the eye into the view. To animate the camera then, I'll use Auto Key. I'll press N and go over to the right frame. I need to check in my time configuration if I've got the right frame rate as well. I'll click on the time configuration, and for this, I'm going to set the custom frame rate at 24, or I can choose Film. I want to give myself enough frames to play with. I'll say that this is going to be a 4 second shot. I'll put the frame count at 96, and I can always stretch this if I need. 24 frames per second times 4 is 96, running at real time, 1 speed. OK. On the time slider at 95, or 96 frames, I'll pan over 
and then I'll orbit the camera to reveal the echoes off in the distance. For this shot, I want to make sure that I'm fairly level to them. Low is okay. I'd like to have them line up roughly on the third line here on the camera, so that on the vertical third and the horizontal third, there's our characters. And I need to make sure I orbit so they don't have a column sticking out of one of their heads. That's a pretty good frame on this shot to start. I'll turn off Auto Key to make sure I don't accidentally key something and test out the shot. When I hit play, the camera pans to the left and reveals the echoes. Pretty good shot. I need a little more tweaking on it to make it really work. Right now, it starts fairly suddenly and stops decently but could go a little slower. I'll go into the track view and fix this. Notice I have the camera one target selected. I'll open up the track bar and I can see my animation for my target. Here's the red x-axis and the green y with nothing going on on z. The keys are already eased. They slow down to a stop. But what I may want to do is slow this further. I'll select the key at 95 on the x and grab the handle and move it. Now I don't want to do this. This will give me an odd wiggle in the camera motion. What I'd like to do is grab the handle and hold control and extend this handle out horizontally just a little bit. Maybe just past that second grid line here at 60. I'll do the same on the Y axis so that the motion stays consistent. Holding control extends that handle horizontally. Now I've slowed the motion on the target as we come into that 96th frame. What I can do is right click in the view and choose select camera from the quad menu. There's my keys for my camera and I can perform the same operation. Selecting their keys and dragging the bezier handle to the left just a little bit to slow down that motion. Here's the Y axis. And now I've got a nice easy motion into that shot. I'll go back and check. I start off the window, I pan to the left and slow down to show the egos. This shot works nicely. At this point, at the end of this shot, my depth of field should be focused on them and I'm ready to cut to a medium shot of them talking or maybe one of them will turn and look at us as part of this animation and we can cut to the next scene.